Hey there, Harper here. The Dean jacket is on, which means I am going to be talking about a TV show. I finally am ready to talk about Vincenzo. And I have a lot to say, and I don't know where to start. <laughs> First and foremost, there will be spoilers all over this. But technically, this show came out before mine did. So, I spoiled that. Might as well spoil this one. <laughs> Watch the shows. Watch the shows that I'm going to talk about and then come back and uh, we'll talk about them in the, this, in the comments. But I think in order to fully talk about this show the way I want to talk about this show, I need to get some characters out of the way first. And that is everybody in the plaza. Because as cool as their little stories are and all that, they don't matter to the plot. I said it. I'll say it again. They don't really matter to the plot. Sure, some of them are very helpful along the way, but I feel like everything in the plaza is padding. We have a 20-episode drama. Each episode, an hour and 25 minutes. Most of that, faff it about. So, we're going to get the, the plaza out of the way because, yes, it's important. It is why Vincenzo is in Korea. But other than that, it's just needless, goofy antics. And we could have a perfectly reasonable six-episode drama if we take out all of the stuff that, with the plaza. Sorry, I, <laughs> I binged this. I binged this all at once, and I loved every bit of it. But the plaza bits got annoying. So, we're just going to talk about them. Okay, so, in this plaza, there, uh, this plaza which is scheduled for demolition so that uh, Babel can build their tower. It's a thing I'll get into it, just give me a minute. In this plaza, there are several different stores, just all over the place, and the whole plaza is owned by uh, this gentleman right here, who is Mr. Cho, who you like, and then you don't like, and then you like again, and... Then, you know, he, he goes on a, a roller coaster of his own. And, and there was, at one point in time, I was just like, ah, No, you didn't! And then it got better, like, almost immediately. And that's really how this show goes. It's just like, it builds up to a point, and it's just like, ah, No! And then it's resolved immediately in the next episode, and I wish some things would have drug on just a little bit longer. I feel like this already is, is giving you this sort of a meh of how I felt about it. I really like this show. I plan on watching it again. Like, there are a couple shows that I've found where I will just go back to them. Extracurricular is one of them. Also, watch Extracurricular. Also, also, uh, one of the uh, bad guys, which I'll get to in this show, is in that show. And I recognized her right away, and I'm like, hey, you're that cop. And I feel really good when I can recognize a face, so yay. Gumga Plaza, owned by Mr. Cho. The only reason Vincenzo goes there is that there is gold in the basement. A whole lot of gold, like a big pile of gold and a golden Buddha. There's a lot of gold in the basement, and all of it is underneath the Nanyak Temple, which houses these two monks, Monk Jaka and Monk Chasing. And they are wonderful. <laughs> Beyond the temple, we have the snack bar. The uh, Yango snack bar run by Miss Kwok Hisu and her son, Kim Youngho. And her son likes to do YouTube videos and make his face, like paint his face up all weird. And also is a bit of a delinquent sometimes, but gets better. Moving on, there is Destiny Piano, who is run by So Miri, who is adorable and also kind of creepy, but I love it. And she's also a hacker. We'll get into that. There is the Ghost Up Dance Studio, run by Larry Kang, who is a street dancer and a performance artist. And he was kind of cool. He 
is teaching all the ladies in the plaza how to act like zombies for an upcoming film that is being shot somewhere. And that comes into use later. To which the poor soul that they unleashed the zombies against, I feel you. Zombies are horrible. No zombies. Zombies, no. There's the jail dry cleaners run by Mr. Tuck, who is an expert with scissors in more ways than one. There is Arno Restaurant, who is run by Chef Toto, who has a ridiculous mustache and claims to know all this Italian cuisine and is has never left the peninsula. So he, he and Vincenzo butt, butt heads a few times. But overall, people like his food. And he's weird. He's a weird guy. I He, he kind of left me, like, just weirded out. Like, I, I don't know if it was the curly hair and me just automatically assuming everybody with curly hair is evil because that's what K-dramas have taught me. Or what exactly it was about it. But he was just kind of weird for weird's sake, and I didn't like it. He stood out in that aspect. He gets an apprentice later on, Mr. An, who is also a member of the International Security Intelligence Agency, who goes undercover as the apprentice to look after Vincenzo because he's kind of obsessed with the mafia. Uh, there's anti-financial management, which then becomes Bye Bye Balloon Agency with a variety of people in it, and basically the main guy, Mr. Park, used to be uh, the head of an agency that was sent to rid the plaza of all of its people, but changed his ways after being locked in a freezer for a really long time. So now he runs Bye Bye Balloon Agency, which is a way for people who need to leave the country to leave the country without having to go through all the paperwork of getting a passport and airplane ticket. It's not the best company, but I guess it works. Mr. Pawn Shop is run by husband and wife duo Mr. Lee and Miss Chang. And Mr. Lee is always wearing this hat. You find out later that he was a high-level wrestler. And he's got cauliflower ears, and that's why he's wearing the hat. And his wife was an all-star level weightlifter. So like everybody in this plaza has a little secret underneath. Like these two are a boxer and a lifter respectively. The dry cleaner guy is really good with scissors because he likes to use them to stab people. Piano teacher is a hacker. The mom in charge of the snack bar is a former boxer. Chef Toto is Chef Toto. Larry was a street fighter turned dancer. They all have some little things in their past that they they kind of want to keep hidden, which is why they're all in this plaza. And you may go, oh, that sounds interesting. The whole plaza could have been its own long-running series, and that would have been fine. Finally, is the law firm, the G. Paragi Law Firm, which is run by uh, Mr. Hong, Hong yu Chan, and his paralegal, Mr. Nam Joo-sung. As soon as this man came on the screen, Mr. Hong here, I said, Hang on a minute. You're the evil guy from Itaewon class. I hope that you redeem yourself in this because you need something because that's all I can see you now is just this evil empire douchebag. And he does. And then he dies. I did mention there are spoilers. So he doesn't get very long in there. When he is hit by a van in the middle of a cafe while having dinner. Then again, so is Vincenzo because they're eating dinner together. And... Vincenzo is not killed. It was mainly trying to run over Mr. Han here. So that is the plaza. <laughs> Who we really need to talk about is this pyramid. This is the main cast of Vincenzo. Start with main character, Vincenzo Casano, who was adopted when he was eight and sent to Italy. And then the once there became the consigliere for a mafia boss. He is Mr. Mafia Man. And he is ruthless and has the worst trigger discipline from anybody I've ever seen in a mafioso role. Seriously, man. Seriously. Okay. I know I've mentioned this a few times in some of the videos that I've watched, but if you are not going to shoot something, 
directly in like the next few seconds. Get your finger frickin' trigger. There is an arm bar, there is a finger bar. You put your finger alongside and when you are ready to shoot, then you put your finger on the trigger, squeeze, don't jerk, you squeeze and it fires the gun. Sorry, I needed to get that out for a while. There are so many, there are so many just various times when it's just like, get your finger off the f trigger. <laughs> Someone had to have been on set, like the gun wrangler or whatever you want to call it. The weapons experts just to say, hey, maybe don't do that because someone in America is going to lose their freaking mind every time they see it. <laughs> me. That person is me. <laughs> uh, Vincenzo comes to Korea to find gold because he threatened his brother who is the new mob boss. You see, he was adopted by a nice family and that family was then killed and then he was readopted by the mob boss family. And became the um, conciliere that everybody knows and loves. It was like referenced in a sentence in one of the later episodes. So it's just kind of like, oh, so you weren't straight adopted by the mob family? Okay, cool. He also wants to get everybody out of the plaza so he can demolish the plaza so he can get to the gold underneath the temple. But then he sort of falls in love with the building and the people inside of it. Kind of like, oh, this is so cute. Everybody's nice and great and stuff like that. Also, he has a fierce sense of justice being a concilier. And when Mr. Hong dies, he helps uh, take over the law firm with Mr. Hong's daughter, Cha Young, who starts the TV show at Wu Sang Law Firm with Mr. Han and also her intern, Junwoo. And then after her dad gets murdered by Babel, she switches over to the good side. Mr. Han Sung Hyuk is the main lawyer guy at the Wu Sang Law Firm, and his goal in life is to become one of the chief prosecutors because you always want to build up. And he, this law firm, is in charge of all of uh, Babel's proceedings. Babel is a group run by Chairman Jang Han So, this guy, and he is the biggest himbo, and I love him. He's also kind of evil. Well, Babel is evil. Babel, starting off with uh, their pharmaceutical corporation, has denied giving people blood cancer, but that's definitely what they're doing. And, like, the chemicals they use have been linked to various toxic entities. And they're like, nah, we don't do that. People are just foregoing the safety measures, and that's why they're getting sick. They should be paying us. And instead, they're dying. Ha ha ha, we're evil. You know, a normal big corporation. It's the thing they do. But Wu Sang is in charge of all of their lawyerly business. To help along with that, Mr. Han hires a former colleague of him, Nung Hee, who has not the best ways of getting what she wants. She is a ruthless bitch and possibly one of the best written characters in this show. <laughs> like, you hate her. You really hate her. And you want her to get some sort of comeuppance, which she does. But it takes a while and she's just so cold-hearted that you're just like i don't understand how people a whole person like this can exist and yet people like this exist all the time the only person at wusong that really cares about what what cha young has to, has to say is junwoo who is this silly idiot intern but of course he's not because he's played by Taekyun. <laughs> He's third build, and you're like, hmm, you may seem like some weird idiot, but something else is going on here, and we all know that something else is going on here, and then in quite possibly the best PowerPoint presentation <laughs> ever shown on film, <laughs> you find out that Junwoo is actually Han Seok the chairman's older brother, and he is actually the chairman of, of Babel and has 
actually been pulling all the strings this entire time, and he is evil. Delicious, deliciously evil. Oh my god, he's so evil in this. Everything about his performance is amazing. <laughs> and it's not just because I got a mad crush on him, okay? Seriously, it's not. I started watching this going, ugh, I really hated him in Save Me. I really did. And this, just the character-wise, was so good. And his acting was so well done that I, I, I hope he gets awards for it. I don't know. But I hope he does, because it was really good. So he's evil. Just a psychopath. Crazy. He does some crazy sh stuff. I wish I could show any of that. On here but it can't because Netflix is like no but I'm gonna try anyways <laughs> so yeah basically the entire show is um, Vincenzo and Chaeyoung trying to take down Junwoo and the rest of Babel all while Junwoo, Hanso, Mr. Han and Ms. Jai try to not have that happen and good conquers all and it takes 19 episodes for Chaeyoung to get kidnapped seriously Seriously, it was so like everything in it was really good. Like, don't get me wrong, everything in this show was really good, but it was so drawn out. <laughs> it did not have to be this long, <laughs> but I'm not writing it. So there's a lot of hockey imagery, and I don't know if hockey's. A, I didn't realize, I guess, that hockey is a big thing in Korea. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just for this show. Maybe it's just because. They had a couple people who knew how to do hockey things, who could skate well. Mm, who knows? But hockey is a big thing. And what else? Oh, there are two separate occasions that Junwoo pulls out some 2 p.m. moves, mainly the Can You Feel My Heartbeat? And also in episode 12, uh, two other members are in a TV program that he is watching, and it's like, oh! I know those guys. <laughs> I don't know if I have anything else to say. You can watch it. You can watch it yourself. It's on Netflix. It's really good. People get come up with this. It is uh, a bit bloody at times, but what do you expect from a TV show about a mob boss? He's not a boss. About a mafioso. There's going to be some bloody times. Also, Vincenzo pretends is pretends to be this guy's boyfriend at some point in time, and it is the cutest little scene that um, could ever be, even though Vincenzo is like, this guy is kind of responsible for my um, actual birth mother being in jail, so I hate you. Yeah. That's a whole, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. There's a lot that happens that I did not talk about. Like this group of survivors of people who were wronged by Babel Pharmaceuticals, going and blowing up a warehouse. Uh, oh, that reminds me. Where does he get all of his gold lighters? Because he comes with one that he had already used in Italy to burn down someone's uh, vineyard. Somehow, like, he keeps throwing his lighters to light things on fire because it's very cinematic. Um, and then we'll have it back in the next scene. And I know at, at one point in time they did show like four lighters on a row, uh, on a dresser, in his in his little room in the plaza, but like it's all the same lighter that he keeps throwing, and he throws it four times, and somehow gets it right back. It just, it's just like that, and the trigger discipline was just like, what's going on with this show? I don't what? Okay, don't think I had any other nitpicky things that I needed to talk about. Just that. Just that. I, I want to reiterate, I really like the show, and that's why I'm picking on it. <laughs> I think that's all I have to say. I will see you next time. Bye!